live. Hello, Kaglers. Uh, welcome to today's live coding. Um, so if you can see the title, uh, I don't remember what it is. The title is how to come up with ideas for a project. So uh, I, fair warning, I'm very tired today. I do have my coffee, so I will be drinking that during the stream and hopefully I'll perk up a little bit. Um, but I was just having the darndest time trying to figure out with what trying to figure out what to do live coding around today. Um, and it eventually occurred to me that I get a lot of questions from people who are new to data science and who are working on building a portfolio um, about how to come up with ideas for projects in the first place. So I thought it might be helpful for me to start a new project from scratch where I don't have any idea what I'm going to do. So imagine that I'm uh, a student looking for a course project or um, I'm just trying to find a project for my, my own time. Um, and I don't know what I want to do, but I know that I want to uh, start something. Very eloquent today. It's going to be, it's going to be a good stream. A little bit of coffee. All right. So the first thing I'd recommend doing is actually finding a data set. So if you are in a position where you have a data set that you know you want to work with, um, in the data science workflow process, the thing that takes the longest that we don't often talk about is actually collecting the data in the first place. Um, so if you know you want to do like uh, some behavioral experiments or um, uh, a scraping project or you want to build a database, um, that's going to be a very different workflow from doing analysis or building a model. So I'm going to look for data sets uh, and I'm going to look for data sets on Kaggle. There's also um, uh, other resources that might be relevant. There's also a uh, Google data set search. Let's see if I can find it. Data set search. There we go. Uh, here we go, which is toolbox.google.com slash dataset search. Um, and this will give you Kaggle datasets. It will give you um, datasets from other sources as well. So if I were interested in, let's say, emoji, um, I can find a bunch of uh, datasets around emoji. So you can see this one's from data.world. This one's from Kaggle. Is uh, this one's by Thomas Selleck. I've uploaded some uh, some data sets, emoji related data sets to Kaggle as well. Uh, EmojiNet, a machine readable dictionary of emoji meanings. Um, so I uploaded this. I didn't collect this. It's from um, uh, some researchers who are uh, Sanjaya. Mmm, Weijera, mm, Weijera I am definitely saying that wrong, and I am so sorry. Uh, but these four uh, researchers are the ones who who collected and developed the data. So that's one place to look for data sets. Another place is on Kaggle. Um, and when I'm getting started on a project, usually I want to do. Uh, uh, something that hasn't been done before, something that's a little bit interesting so that I have, um, you know, sort of more, more space to play. Uh, so instead of looking at hottest data sets on Kaggle, I will actually look at new data sets. So things that people maybe haven't worked on yet. Um, hello, everybody saying hello. Uh, Godson saying hi. Hi. And then Hunter Sweet, Hunter Sweet T, Sweet, uh, on Twitch says hello. Hello. Welcome. All right. Uh, let's take a look at some of these data sets. So some things I might consider, let me zoom in, this is a little bit small. Whoop, whoop. So some things that I might consider, that's too far, some things I might consider when looking at a data set um, is the number of files. If this is just sort of like a quick little project for me, um, I personally am not a computer vision person and data sets with a lot of files are usually computer vision data sets, so I'm going to try to avoid those ones. Uh, I might also look at data sets that have a high data set usability rating. So this is something that we've added relatively recently and it shows you the um, uh, it's sort of a quick reference about how much of the documentation about the data set has been filled out, um, how many descriptions the columns have, or things like that. So things that have a higher usability rating are going to probably be easier to use uh, because they've been sort of more fully fleshed out. 
So that's something else I'll look for. Um, so I'm just going to scroll down for a little bit and look for something with a high usability rating and a small number of files. Uh, so this one might be one. So this one's Global Shark Attacks that was uh, updated by Aileen Debanath. Uh, tags, data cleaning, sensitive subjects, uh, presumably because there is, um, you know, people who were hurt and potentially killed by sharks. Um, animals, environment, and ecology. Uh, the data set comes from the Google Global Shark Attack file. Um, it's a single uh, CSV. Um, here's the, the columns and uh, information. And it looks like uh, somebody has done, uh, Aileen has uploaded a, a data set, uh, a kernel here uh, for data cleaning. So this might be a good place to start. So I'm going to give this data set an upvote and uh, head back here, see what else I can see. Uh, Government of India literacy rating. So this has a really high um, usability rating. Let's take a look at this one. Uh, <laughs> uh, Mingo VDB says it's the kernel bot. Yeah, so the this data set here is made by uh, Kerneler, which if you upload a data set, you can create a starter kernel. Um, and Kerneler is the account that creates those kernels. So that's the Kerneler. Uh, what was I looking at? Uh, Government of India literacy rate. Uh, data set spread across 35 state and union territories. Uh, the official data set released by the Government of India based on the 2001 and 2011 censuses. I don't know how often the Indian census runs. Uh, it looks like it might be every 10 years. I think the US census is every, maybe also every 10 years. I was going to say four years, but I don't think that's right. I think it's rarer than that because the last census happened when I, I clearly remember one happening when I was in college. There might've been one while I was in grad school. Hmm. Okay, so let's take a look at some of the information we have here. So uh, whether it's a state or union territory, the name of the state, the literacy rate, uh, persons, Oh, 2001, 2011 uh, total, and then it's broken down by rural and urban. Um, so this might be uh, an interesting data set to do some analyses on. It looks like it's pretty high quality. Uh, and how many rows is it? Where's that information? I know it's in here somewhere. Oh, it's uh, 36 rows? Okay, so it looks like uh, not that large of a data set, so I might look for something a little bit bigger. Uh, and Ravi says, every 10 years for the college, so that's helpful. Uh, Akhil says, uh, when were you in college? I graduated in 2012. From, uh, you can't see it, I got uh, my, my uh, one of my diplomas on the wall uh, from William & Mary, which is a college in Virginia, which is on the east coast of the United States. Uh, so this looks like an interesting, very clean data set, but I want something a little bit bigger. So I'm going to um, pass on this one for now. Uh, let's see, World Bank data. Eh, I've worked with World Bank data kind of a lot. Not really that interested. Uh, BERT pre-trained transformers. That could be useful. Football team scores. Not really interested in football. That's pretty neat <laughs> with two Ts by Paul. Okay. Uh, Quick draw subset. So this looks like a smaller version of the quick draw data set, which is uh, again an image data set. So I'm not that interested in it. Mm. Uh, countries organized alphabetically. So it looks like more of a utility data set. Uh, Victorian 400. This looks like colorized photos for maybe a, a photo colorization project. Mm. Persian sentiment analysis. That looks interesting. Let's take a look at that. Uh, Digi Kala comments Persian sentiment analysis uh, by Persian, I th presuming this person means Farsi, the language. Uh, about 3,000 Persian comments scraped from Digi Kala for sentiment analysis. And I'm not familiar with Digi Kala, but based on the background, it looks like some sort of e commerce site, maybe. Uh, you can test this model, your models, for the Persian Farsi language. Okay. Uh, the data set is all about the comments in the Digi Kala website site. These comments are scraped from digicala.com and have been labeled based on the stars, people who have brought the products gave to them. Okay, so this is going to be sort of like the, the Amazon reviews data set. 
Uh, also, many of the comments are noisy and do not provide a clean data for us, and it is not such a reliable source. By adding the second label to the data, we can ensure a higher accuracy for our training data. So there's the comments, there's the ratings for each comment. Uh, and one indicates suggesting others to buy, so like a really positive review. Two means otherwise. Three is a neutral opinion. Four means the person has rated the product but suggested whether to buy or not. Oh, we see. So there's a star rating and then also whether or not they've suggested that other people buy the same product. Um, interesting. Uh, and we've got... Uh, I could swear there's a place where you can see how many rows are in the data set. Am I just making this up? Let's try one of these other uh, column views here. Uh, so it looks like there's about 3,000 rows. Uh, and the scores, uh, interestingly, are on a scale of 0 to 100. So I'm guessing that this is actually um, the sentiment score, would be my guess. Uh, and then this is whether or not someone uh, suggested that you would buy it. Uh, so this is a really interesting data set, but I don't, um, I don't know Farsi. <laughs> uh, so if I did build a model on this, it would be a little bit hard for me to uh, evaluate how good it is. If any of you do know Farsi, this might be um, a good data set for you. So, uh, I would probably uh, avoid. Uh, uh, I would probably avoid this data set for me for just like a lightweight project because if for for me to be able to interpret the model and see if it was good, I'd probably have to include a machine translation component um, or work with a Farsi speaker um, who could um, help me evaluate the model. Um, so that's my. Uh, that's why I won't be using this one, even though I think it is a very good data set. Uh, but let's actually look at the, mm, does it have any tags? Tags e-commerce service. Can I not click on that? Hmm. <laughs> uh, I believe we can see all the tags at kaggle.com slash tags. Yeah. Um, so another place to search for data sets that might be interesting for you. Um, so, so far we were looking at this global shark attacks data set, which I think is uh, pretty interesting and it looks like has already been cleaned so we might be able to uh, use the cleaning as well um, but just to look at some other things that might be interesting to me let's see uh, linguistic so this is the tag we use for language data um, and the the tags that we have come from the uh, the Wikipedia hier hierarchy so we're using the same sort of like structure uh, and they put language under linguistics so uh, all right, so featured data set. Oh, interesting, so we have the, the Bible in Hindi, so it looks like a useful text corpus if you're working with Hindi, um, which I'm, I don't know that I should say this to an audience that almost certainly includes some native Hindi speakers. I'm trying very slowly to learn a little bit. Um, the writing system is kill, killing me. <laughs> I, uh, I'm dyslexic in writing systems. Like the, the, the one I use for English is also very difficult for me. So <sighs> I'm working on it. Maybe one day I'll be to the point where I can actually um, use data in the language and, and be not a complete um, ignorant person. Okay. Uh, let's see some other uh, people are saying censuses are mostly every 10 years. Uh, that's from Alan. Thank you. Helpful. Uh, uh, Niha says, what about the Pokemon Gen 7 Pokedex? I don't really know much about Pokemon. Most of my friends are super into Pokemon. Um, and I just feel like it's, mm, it, I realize that it's not dogfighting, but it feels like a little bit like dogfighting to me. I don't know. Um, I didn't get into it as a kid. And as an adult, I'm like, ooh, there's some, some things in this premise that I find pretty disturbing. Um, I do prefer Digimon because they're the Digimon like choose to be your friend and you have to maintain like a good relationship with you and it's not like weird capturing dynamics. Anyway, uh, George or maybe 
Jorge uh, says, hi, how different are projects from common competition problems at Kaggle? Um, so probably the biggest difference is that for Kaggle competitions, we have defined what success looks like for you in a very concrete way. Um, and for projects, you have to do that, do that for yourself. Um, and also we give you very clean data um, and do sort of a lot of the, the upfront work so that it can be um, as fair as possible. So, uh, uh, David says, is the models workshop all completed? Yes, yeah, so that was that was three days, um, and I'll be trying to be available on uh, uh, Kaggle today as well. Uh, okay, so other data sets here that might be helpful. Let's take a look in the data sets, uh, and let's also, oh, it has removed my tag that I was using. Uh, so let's actually do updated instead of new. So this will be by the date that they've been updated. Uh, and then I want, Based. Nope, that's not what I wanted. Uh, I actually want to search by a tag, and the tag that I was looking at was linguistics. All right. So some other projects we have. Uh, uh, Amazon reviews for sentiment analysis. Amazon reviews are, uh, that's the data set I mentioned earlier. Uh, the examiner spam clickbait news. Uh, so this looks like it might be a classification problem. And uh, looking at this, this has a very high usability rating. So let's take a look at this. Uh, six years of crowdsourced journalism by uh, Roke Rock, R-O-H-K. Give that an upvote. Uh, from the pseudo news site, The Examiner. Um, I feel I feel like I've heard about this as like a tabloid, like sort of a, a trashy newspaper. Um, it's the headlines of uh, three million articles written by twenty one thousand authors over six years. Um, well, the Examiner was never praised for its quality. It consistently churned out thousands of articles per day over several years. So this is just like a lot of text. Um, and given that, Hmm. I don't know if this is something that you can like publicly um, that anyone in the public can contribute to, but based on that volume and the number of contributors, I would not be shocked if there were some generated text in here as well. Uh, they were ranked highly in search results, had enormous shares on social media. Um, as the platform was driven through ad revenue, most of their content was rushed, unsourced, and factually sparse. Uh, it still manages to paint a colorful picture about the trending topics over a long period of time. So here we have the published date, and then we have the text of the headline in English. Uh, and the data is from 2010 to 2015. Uh, and there's also a tokenized version of the data set, which is really nice. Uh, and... Uh, with failing view, its operations were absorbed by AXS in 2014, and the website was shut down in 2016. Um, so we wouldn't be able to continue gathering new data from this source. Um, the original portal and content no longer exists. This is the last surviving record of its existence. Hmm, interesting. Um, so just looking at uh, this data set right now, something that immediately jumps out to me is that there seem to be um, a lot of listy things. So um, these are, it looks like the, they're sorted by published date and then headline text. Um, and it looks like there's a lot of headlines that are about 10 things. And this suggests to me that it might be interesting to see what sort of things this new site was writing um, top 10 lists about. Uh, and I think we could do that in, in 40 minutes. Famous last words. Uh, so let's check out the kernel, see if there's one we can use to, to kickstart our work, and then see if we can do a project on um, uh, top 10, top 10 lists. Top 10 topics for top 10 lists on the examiner. Um, so I think that would be a, a pretty interesting, uh, pretty interesting project. So let's see starter pack so they're reading in the data uh, and they're fake news data so where's this fake news data data coming from let me see 
oh, I see. So this is a um, this is a, a data set that uh, this particular kernel brings in a lot of different data sets because I didn't think that this was called fake news. I think it was actual content, whether or not it was uh, factually correct and well fact-checked is a separate question. Um, okay, so that's not going to be super helpful for us. Um, Autoencoder for headline classification, we know that we're just interested in a very small subset of the headlines, so that's not super helpful. Um, Unigram survey, n-gram excuse me, n-gram analysis, uh, and then the decline of the examiner, and that was from seven days ago. Let's take a quick look at that. Uh, Oh, interesting. So this is looking at articles per month, and you can see that it was at one point very high and sort of petered down over time. Uh, okay, so this is interesting, but I think I'm actually going to start my own analysis from scratch. Where were we? Uh, let's kick off a new notebook. Get rid of you, get rid of you, get rid of you. All right, um, and because this is just like a quick little project and the data is already in tables, I'm going to use R and I won't hear any whining. You can, you can whine, I just am going to ignore it. Um, I have mentioned many times that for a very quick uh, tabular data analysis, I strongly prefer R. Uh, all right. Uh, people asking, I'm just joining, what did I miss here? Uh, well, we're just starting the project and the first part was sort of figuring out what the project should be and looking at a bunch of different data sets. Uh, David says, what does tokenized data mean? Oh, great question. Um, so tokenization is uh, tidyverse, tidyverse. Um, tokenization is a process whereby you take um, all of the words and break them apart. Um, so instead of having um, one object that's just like a text string of an entire sentence, you'd have, um, a lot of times people use dictionaries for this in Python, you'll have one entry for the sentence and then inside the, um, inside the entry you'll have each of the words broken apart individually so you can, you can treat them individually. It sort of only works with languages that are not particularly morphologically rich. Um, because if you have a language like German, where most words are made up of lots of little word parts, and you just break them down into individual words, it's not necessarily going to be especially uh, useful for you. Tidy test is nothing. Tidy text is the thing that I'm looking for. It would also help if I spelled library right. All right. And then uh, data read.csv. Nope. I'm using the tidyverse, so I want to make sure it's a tibble instead of a regular data table. Uh, let's look at the tokens real quick. Well, well, that's not loading. Let's open this in another uh, uh, tokens. Let's see what that looks like. Uh, okay, so it has... Mm, I don't know that this has been tokenized. I think it's just been lowercased. Um, it might have been tokenized at some point in the past, but it looks like it hasn't currently isn't in the uh, the way that it's been shared. So let's read in our data set input. We still get that weird thing with the back ticks. Uh, input, examine the examiner. I do have an open bug for this. I just think the kernel team hasn't gotten around to it. Uh, and let's do the tokens one just because it looks like it's been lowercase. So I think that'll make our job a teeny bit easier. Get rid of you. All right. Oh, yeah. Also, I should close my parentheses, maybe. That might help. All right, so the things that I'm interested in doing, I'm going to start a new little block. So the first thing I need to do is get just the um, top 10 examiner top 10 lists. Lists. There we go. Uh, so the first thing I want to do is get just the rows with top 10 lists ones that start with 10. Uh, I think it's probably the easiest way to do that, looking at just the first couple rows of the data set. Uh, and from there, uh, first I want to plot um, the number of lists over time. Because uh, we know from looking at the other kernel that there's sort of like this decay over time of the number of articles, and I'm wondering if that is the same for top 10 lists, or maybe as the um, the sort of the the project started to, you know, peter out of existence, um, you saw an increase in the number of lists because they're presumably less work to write than a news story? I don't know. I'm not really a reporter. It's not something I've spent much time on. 
a little extra coffee. Uh, uh, and other suggestions for uh, uh, other interesting data sets. Yeah, there's a lot on Kaggle. Um, so if people who are watching are looking for interesting data sets to work with, uh, check, the, check the comments. Lots of people are suggesting things. Uh, <laughs> a lot of people whining about me using R. That's, that's OK. Uh, Robbie says, uh, wouldn't walk Kaggle allow Julia notebooks? We actually used to have them, and nobody used them, so we stopped maintaining them. Uh, yeah, and then I think it would be good if we could um, look at most common topics. And that's going to be the thing that I think takes the longest. Um, so let's look at our really quickly data.head head data. There we go. Uh, all right, headline tokens. Okay, so we need to make sure, um, it looks like this top one here is 100, and we need, to, we need to make sure that we're only getting the ones that start with 10. So let's take our data object, and then we're going to uh, filter uh, where, mm, so I know that filter starts with, Tidyverse is, I know there's a specific, um, do it over here, uh, a specific argument in, uh, um, the filter object where you can look at just the starts with thing. Uh, there we go. Um, filter string detect from stringer. I think there might be something that specifically, um, I think there might be something that specifically uh, uh, starts with, and it looks like it's not in this blog post, but that's okay. All right, so we want to filter. Uh, and this string detect is from the stringer package. So rather than uh, loading in the whole package, I'm just going to use this syntax, which will work if there is a um, installed library in your current working environment, which this is installed for Kaggle. And then uh, headline tokens is the column that we're interested in. And we're looking for ones that start with 10 and then a space. Yes, that's not good code. And this should give us, um, so I haven't saved it to anything. I've just printed it out and it looks like 10 trends, 10, 10 space zero, zero, zero. It's supposed to be 10,000, um, 10,000. It looks like we've seen that again. So we may need to, um, yeah, so you can see that there's uh, 4,853 rows. So I'm guessing that we have quite a few of these uh, 10 space 000 thousand guys. Um, so I'm gonna also remove those. String detect, uh, and I'm going to uh, use the bang to invert this. So here we returned only things that matched. Here we're going to return only things that do not match. Uh, headline tokens, and then uh, the little caret means the start of the line. This bit is from is from Perl. It's a regular expression. Uh, Ten space zero zero zero. All right. Uh, and from there, we're actually just going to look at the top fifty. Error in parse text, unexpected in input. Yep, that would be because I am missing a parenthesis again. And we have gotten rid of all of those 10,000 things. Excellent. Um, 10 for 2010. That's all. What's the whole thing that the article is about? Um, all right. 10 off big dogs make cheap fun date night. 10 off big dogs makes. What does that mean? 10 off big dogs makes cheap fun date night. Big dogs are 
10% off, $10 off? What's a big dog, like a big dog? Like big dogs are on sale and that makes a great date night to go buy a dog? That's not something you should do on a date. I'm sure this makes sense in context, but um, it's nonsense <laughs> to me right now as I'm trying to uh, save it. So, uh, and I'm gonna call this data frame top 10 lists. There we go. All right. Uh, and from here, we're gonna plot the number of lists over time. So here I'm just going to, uh, what is it? Alt shift, nope, control shift, control shift, yeah. So it's control shift hyphen to split a cell at your current cursor. And I always forget what it is because I can't remember. Uh, yeah. Uh, oh, and um, uh, Athena, mmm. Athanasios says, uh, starts with is used for columns, but try it within filter um, for when I was talking about starts with. So. All right. Uh, da -da. So I was just checking on the comments to see if anything else had come up, but it didn't look like it had. So let's look at the number of top 10 lists over time. So we're going to do ggplot. Uh, the data set is going to be the top 10 lists that we just created. Uh, and then the uh, aesthetic. So on the x axis, we want the date, which is called publish date. Mm. I may need to parse these so that they are correctly interpreted as dates. That's the lowercase. Um, and then I th think I can do mm, geome is actually what the first bit I'm looking for. So these are all, so that sort of creates the plot and the axes. And then here I'm looking for, um, so I think actually what's gonna be easiest is if I do top 10 lists, And then I group, nope, lowercase, group by. So this is just like group by in SQL. Um, the tidyverse syntax takes a lot from SQL. So if you know SQL, which you should, uh, if you're a professional data scientist, then it's very straightforward, I think. Uh, we're gonna group by publish date. Here we go. Uh, and then we're going to, um, I think this will work. So let's quickly pop this into a new cell and check. Yeah, okay, excellent. Um, and these are in order, it looks like. So from here, doop, uh, we can immediately go to ggplot. Delete that, go to here. Um, so we don't need to say what the data is because it will be the output of the previous um, line in the pipeline. Uh, and then y equals n. So the, uh, the number per date that we got from this count function. Uh, and then this needs to be a plus and not a pipe because we are within this function and then geom line. That should work. Mm. <laughs> All right, something's gone wrong. Uh, uh, noted. So... Yeah, so the thing that's gone wrong is that I'm treating these dates as numbers. Um, and if you treat 20100000 as a number and you're iterating up through it for dates, uh, there comes a point at the end of the year where you just have a bunch of missing numbers. So I think we do need to actually do some, uh, do some date parsing here. All right, all right, all right, all right. Uh, so... Let's do that here. Uh, what's in Luberdate? So Luberdate is a package for working with dates that I don't think is part of core tidyverse. Uh, so I want to make date time, and then in here, uh, uh, let's just see if this works. So I'm going to, uh, nope. What did I call it? Did I just call it data? Yeah, I just called it data. Uh, 
data and then publish date and then I'm just going to take the first 10 and see if I can parse them. That doesn't look right. <laughs> <laughs> that that does in fact look wrong. Um, so the problem here is that the date itself is being treated as a year, because um, that is a year that will eventually happen. Um, and then it's just sort of a pending month and day. Um, and I'm pretty sure there is a f way to, uh, <laughs> I'm pretty sure there is a way to specify uh, the specific, uh, details. So it's not, this isn't the one that we want. This isn't the one that we want. So what's happening here is that the first argument here is year. And so when I'm passing in this list of numbers, it's not parsing these as dates, it's treating the list that I'm passing in as a year. Uh, so this is not the function that we want. We want a different function. What else do we have in Luberdate? I'm hitting tab here to bring up all the um, auto completions for this. Mm -hmm. Parse, maybe? There might be something called parse. Uh, mm -hmm. Make diff time as date time. That might be it. So let's look what as date time takes in. Convert an object to a date or date time. Okay, that's what I'm looking for. Um, and do I have a place where I can specify what it looks like? Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Uh, oh, it looks like this may or may not work, but let's try it real quick. So here, instead of make date time, we're going to do as date time to convert an existing. Hmm. Uh, what if I say that it is year? Uh year, month, day, probably. Is that gonna, I believe this is another function, year, month, day. Uh, argument is missing with no, yeah, okay, okay. Um, so this function specifies that what I'm looking for is year, month, day. Uh, all right, so What I'm going to do is I'm going to move this data cleaning up here uh, and data, I'm going to mutate the column publish date uh, and it's going to be uh, that same column but converted to a date time. Uh, and let's double check that this is going to work. So first I'm going to look at just the first 50 items. So i to make sure it works. Um, and it looks like it works just fine. Excellent. So now I'm going to do it to the whole thing and I'm going to replace my current uh, data frame with it. Doop. Doop. First dates. Uh, and this will take a while because it's converting um, all of the thousands of rows into dates. And so from here, all right. Uh, so from here, we should get, yeah, a much more reasonable um, data frame. And it looks like the number of uh, top 10 lists per day is also decreasing over time, just like the number of total uh, lists per day. So, oh, and uh, Jerry's saying, your mind too should do it. Uh, yes, that should help. Uh, Ole K says, make the day as a factor. No, it will treat it as a string. <laughs> it will not help in a particular, uh, particular problem. A little sip of coffee. All right, uh, and I actually don't like the line. Uh, I think what I want is actually a fit. Is it not called fit? So I'm looking for the like um, smooth. That's what I'm looking for. So I'm looking for the for smooth. No, caps lock off. There we go. Uh, da, da, da. Okay, excellent. So here we have the um, 
uh, the smoothed line showing the pattern over time. Uh, and I'm actually also going to add geom points and then uh, AES opacity. Uh, alpha, I think alpha is the thing I'm looking for. Uh, zero. Point five. Um, so this will make it a little bit, uh, is it not? Yeah. Oh, it's geom point, not geom points. Um, so the 0 0.5 makes them a little bit see-through so you can see where they overlap. Um, <laughs> uh, do I have a jitter argument as well? I want them to be jittered a little bit. Uh, ignoring unknown parameter jitter. Hmm. Check that really quick. Geom. Ooh. Hashtag geom underscore point. Uh, tell me about how to jitter them. Alpha worked. Fill, color, group size, shape, stroke. Uh, the stroke is like the... Um, I don't know what the stroke is, but something. All right. To YouTube. Nope. I don't know why I said that. Uh, specifically, we're going to be going to uh, Google. Jittered points. Oh, it's geom jitter. I have to use a different argument. Gotcha. Uh, and this will just sort of jiggle them a little bit so they're not right on top of each other. Yeah, there we go. So I think that's a little bit easier to read, uh, a little bit more of a, of a B plot vibe. Uh, and I actually want them to be even more see-through. So let's do 0 0.1. Mm, even more see-through, 0 0.01. Oh, and I'm putting them on top of, uh, I'm putting them on top of the smooth and I actually want the smooth on top. So let's do this. This should be a little bit better. Yeah, okay, so here we have the, the jitter dots in the background showing sort of the, the number, and then we have the uh, uh, slow decay over time of the number of top 10 lists per day. All right, uh, so I think that's a pretty good start. Uh, get rid of you. Uh, I'm gonna move this up to here and actually I am going to uh, do the mutation immediately after I read it in so I'm never working with uh, a data set without parse dates. Read in and parse dates. All right uh, and now if we do this we should see that it is in fact a date and not a um, not a number so it's not being treated as a number. Uh, oh, and everyone's saying geom jitter. Yeah, there's a little bit of a, there's a little bit of delay between the stream. I'm not ignoring you. I'm just seeing your very helpful advice too late. Uh, can we use, uh, so Kartik says, can we use Kaggle dataset and top team solutions in discussion and implementation for a paper? Yeah, um, if it's, especially if it's a research competition, people might um, have already published papers about their specific solutions. So um, you can cite those in your, uh, analyses. Otherwise, you can uh, link back to the site and sort of cite them like you would a, a blog post. So yeah, no, you definitely can. Uh, all right. So now, hmm. So now I'm trying to figure out what's going to be the easiest way to figure out the most common topics. Uh, hmm. We have about 15 minutes. I think this is definitely doable. I think the easiest way is going to be to tokenize them and then plot the most common words. Uh, so instead of doing actual topic modeling, we're just taking the most common words and using them as sort of a, a proxy for our topic models, um, especially once we've removed stop words. So uh, find most common words in top 10 list titles. Uh, so for here, I'm going to look for the 
do I want to do unigrams or bigrams? So do I want to look at the most common single word or do I want to look at the most common two word phrases? And I think I want to look at just the most common single word um, in particular because news headlines tend to have a little bit of um, weird syntax that they have uh, that's a little bit, a little bit different. So um, I am thinking that what I'll do is uh, ignore any grams above unigrams. I'm just gonna look at words, not not phrases. Ooh, a lot of sediment in my coffee today. That's okay. All right, how am I gonna do this? I'm going to find the tidy textbook. Uh, tidy textbook. Um, most common words. Um, if y'all aren't familiar, Tidy Text is uh, a library for NLP in most common words in the book. That is, in fact, what I'm looking for. Um, in R, most common, there we go. Uh, so how did you get to this point? And the package was developed by David Robinson and uh, Julia Silge. Um, Julia Silge is at Stack Overflow, and David Robinson is... Ooh, I don't know where he is. I know he changed jobs relatively recently, so. All right, um, so. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Um, let's look at the, what everything that's in this pipeline. So we have uh, this text and then book, and then line number, and then chapter. So text is the um, the column that's going to be similar to our column, a headline token. So that's the one I want to sort of follow through here. Um, so uh, the first thing that we do is we unnest the token. So this is the the tokenizi token tokenizing, you know, fun old tokenizing. Why can't I copy this? There's a handy button. I'm just going to use the handy button. Uh, so, two, 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 two. Uh, we can get rid of this because we already read this in and we are not in fact using original books. We are using our uh, beautiful data frame that we've been working with, which is called data, as I remember. And our text is not called text, it is called headline something or other? Headline tokens, even though it has not been tokenized. All right, uh, and actually I'm gonna do that thing where I look at just the first Oh, we're using different uh, different spacing conventions, so let's fix that. Rachel, do you use tabs? Yes, it's less typing. If it bothers you, you can set it to your IDE so it converts to the preferred number of spaces. Um, but I am lazy. Uh, efficient in my work patterns. <laughs> uh, let's see, and then let's top 50, uh, and then make sure that this do work. Yeah, there we go. Um, so what we have here is the... Um, why are you here? You should not be here. Yeah, it's because it's not called data. It's called top 10 lists. There we go. Um, excellent. So we have this uh, data set where we have the, um, the date and then also the um, uh, each token is in a separate row of the data frame. Um, so we do want to do that. And then the next thing that we want to do is we want to remove stop words. Um, so again, I'm having trouble copying just part of this. Um, so stop words are very common words. So in English, it's things like the, of, and that aren't particularly informative. Um, so I'm gonna try just this. And I believe that this should be, uh, I keep getting confused between Python and uh, um, R syntax. Um, so this is loaded in with the um, tidy text library. Here are that. Okay, that all looks as I expect it. Uh, and then we want to anti-join with our stop words file. All right. Um, so you can see that we have uh, 
removed a lot of the um, unnecessary words. So I think like in this um, uh, headline, it was 10 PlayStation games to watch in 2010. So that we've all removed. Um, and the other thing I want to remove is um, numbers. Uh, so what I'm going to do there is to filter. Mm, no, I think I just want to specifically remove the number 10. Mm when it is on its own, which I think we can do. So filter word bang. Let me check the, the filter syntax from up here when we used it. Uh, all right, so this is just filter takes in um, a Boolean list the same length as the data frame. Uh, so word is not equal to uh, 10. I don't know that this is going to work. Oh yeah, no, it worked fine. Okay. <laughs> Excuse me. Okay, so we have removed the word 10 and from here we just want count. And I think it's, I think it's just count word. I think that'll do it for us. Yeah, yeah, for sure it do. Uh, and then we want to sort this. So we're going to arrange uh, by N, I think. And then I think uh, descending is an argument. Mm, incorrect size one at position two. Mm, I've forgotten the syntax for a range. Question mark, a range. Tell me more. Uh, data by group equals false. Tidy data, everyone names to college. Oh, I see. Oh, see. So I can just say D E S C. Oh, okay. So it is in fact a, um, it's not an argument. It's a function. Um, and I'm descending by N. All right. Awesome. So we can see the top words for the first 50 lines were 2010 resolutions, 2019 DIY tips, wedding, business, diet, fashion, fastest favor, etc. Um, and now I'm going to take out this line where I was just doing it with the head and have this called most common top 10 words. All right, and then if we look at the head of most common top 10 words, we should see, excellent, uh, the five, sorry, the six, because in our um, head gives you six instead of five. Uh, the six most common words were questions, tips, author, historical fiction, and reasons. Um, so apparently people really like books, I guess, <laughs> uh, from this um, sort of disreputable online um, news source. All right. Uh, Akhil says you can create a bag of words. Um, yeah, that's what I basically have done because I've removed all the information about the about the date. Um, I could sort them by year if that was something that I was interested in and look at how the topics change over time. Uh, but I have seven minutes. I think I can do it. I think I can do it. All right. Uh, oh, uh, and M. Henderson says he's at Flatiron Health, I think, uh, David Robinson. Oh, cool. Like I, I know that he changed jobs. I have forgotten what job he changed to. All right. Uh, uh, Niha said, wouldn't, won't that be A, the, and words like that in the stop words? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and generally stop words for a given language are in lists that are hand created. Uh, so if you are on Kaggle data sets, let's try stop words. You should see a data set I created a while ago. Uh, just show me data sets. Yeah. Uh, well, I don't see it, but I uh, uploaded a, um, a bunch of, um, what if I try my uh, account name, will that work? And then just data sets. Huh? Maybe it was stop word. Anyway, the point of this is that I uploaded a bunch of data sets with different stop word lists for different languages um, a while ago, and I cannot find it anymore. 
Uh, but it, it exists somewhere, and I'll, uh, somebody ping me on Twitter, and I'll, oh, here we go, stop word lists for 19 languages, um, stop word lists for African languages. So I tried to find a bunch of different stop word lists, so they're already up on, um, on Kangle for you. So what did I say we would do? Um, let's actually look at the most common, uh, let's look at the top 25, because I think that's slightly um, uh, more interesting. Uh, it kind of wasn't. <laughs> uh, so some some numbers in here, top two, fun, summer, kids, uh, day, steps, movies, ideas, home, school. Uh, so it looks like sort of mostly, mostly general interest things. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to do the same process, but we are going to do it well grouped by year. Um, what am I doing here? Look at most common 15 words. Uh, all right, so we're gonna copy all of this. Foo, foo, foo. By year. Uh, and first, let's just really quickly look at this top 10 lists uh, data frame and make sure that we do have it by date. We do, excellent. Um, And I should be able to say group by year publish date. Uh, and then let's just count real quick and see if that has worked. It has not worked. Um, I think I mean Nate to say that specify that it is specifically from Luber date. Yeah, okay, excellent. Um, so you can see that we have them sorted by year here um, and that there are six because I'm looking at just the just the head. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to insert this uh, in here, right here, uh, and hopefully it'll keep it all throughout the process, um, but we will see. Or we might get an error, that's also very possible. Mm. No applicable method for unnosed tokens applied to a no. Forgot the pipe. <laughs> uh, okay, so it looks like we have at some point lost our. Um, we have at some point lost our uh, our grouping. So let's double check when that's happening. Uh, and I'm going to look at just. The top 20, I think, should be plenty. Okay, so we definitely had it. Um, we definitely had this year here once we did the unnesting of tokens, so that's not the problem. Uh, is it when we did the anti join with stop words? I know. I know this needs to be fixed. Uh, nope, so we kept it when we did the stop words. A little ablation testing here, seeing where the problem is. Um, is it when we did the filter? Is that where we kicked it off? Nope, we still had it there. Um, so I think it was actually probably at the count, and I think I probably actually need to say count word and then this big old monster. Uh, can't be modified because it is a grouping variable. Okay. Yeah, I would I would expect it not to be. So am I losing it here? Nope, it's here. Hmm. Yeah, it was fine the whole time, actually. Um, uh, and it is in fact uh, me that's the problem. Uh, so I think I actually I want to arrange it in descending uh, and also this publish date. Will that work? No, it does not work. Uh... <laughs> mm hmm. So I'm trying to manipulate it by this uh, uh, 
can I rename it here? Will that work? Yeah, okay, excellent. Um, so then I should be able to arrange by both year and the number of uh, words. No, that's not working. Hmm. <laughs> uh, and then can I do, so I, I'm still grouped by, so if I do top n5, will it give me the five for each word, for each year, or just the top? Oh, right, sorry, I'm doing this, um, I'm doing this in this part. I wanna actually do this such that I will get my output right away. Do, 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 do. Uh, so if I ask for the top n and I ask for the top five, will it give me the top five overall or the top five per year? Okay, so it looks like it's the top five per year uh, and then I can uh, arrange by year ascending. And this should work. Yeah, excellent. Uh, so the top five words in 2010 were tips, reasons, 2010, fun and easy, and 2011 tips, questions, reasons, 2011, one and day. Uh, 2012 questions, tips, authors, fiction, historical. 2013 questions, fictions, historical, 13, 2013 tips. Uh, 2014 questions, fiction, historical, author tips. 25, 2015 questions, author, fiction, historical tips. Um, so it seems like they did sort of get stuck in this uh, questions, author, fiction, historical tips. Um, rut pretty quickly uh, or at least they got stuck in it around 2012 ish it looks like that started to really come up let's get rid of that because i think this is actually the bit that i am uh most interested in and actually i think i can get rid of this whole section and this should, should work fine all right so let's run it all from top to bottom um and i think that's going to be uh uh, pretty much the, the end of the live streaming today. Um, so this is not um, a very big or exciting project. If I were trying to do this in Python, it would not be done because tabular manipulation with pandas is just, at least for me, much slower <laughs> than it is for um, for uh, R specifically. Um, for those of you who don't know, pandas is actually a re-implementation of base R in Python. Um, so if you're familiar with pandas, a lot of that sort of way of thinking about data and manipulating it has come from R. Uh, what do I call this? Analysis. Analysis of top 10 lists from the examiner. All right. Uh, and then I'm going to uh, share it with my um, my second account. I have a second account because I'm a Kaggle employee and I use one for non-admin stuff. Um, it is against our terms of service to have that. I know that that's a, a weird thing to bring up, but just FYI, if you have two accounts and you're uh, competing, we, we will find out. Uh, I don't know who that was, actually. I don't know that it was me. Yeah, well, and I'll, I'll be able to edit my admin account as well, just in case I find uh, an error a little bit later today. And I have an uncommitted draft, so I'm gonna commit it, and then this will create a static version I can refer back to, and it'll have a nice little um, uh, rendered HTML page that I can share with other people. Um, uh, Akhil says, is there a value count for R? Yes, it's just count. Uh, or um, there's a base R function called table as well. Uh, so uh, just to, to show you an example, uh, so count we used here to count the number of instances of word. I don't know if you can hear it, uh, my hedgehog's digging away in the background. Um, what are you doing, buddy? I can't see him, the green screen's behind me. He's having a... Uh, a party back there. Um, uh, so table is the other thing that you could do. Uh, let's say top 10 lists. Uh, and this will uh, create a marginal table for your, uh, your data frame. Um, yeah. All right. Uh, that's going to take a while because this is a pretty big data frame. 
So thank you for joining me today, everybody. I hope this was helpful for you walking through my process and the way that I sort of come up with ideas for projects. And then in this case, I happen to finish a project. And as uh, uh, Robbie says, that's not always possible. Yep, uh, I would agree. And this is, um, uh, I would say, something that was um, skills that I practice quite a bit. So it should be uh, not surprising that it was pretty quick for me. Uh, uh, IP Tech says, how to start the video from the beginning. You should see like a little um, red bar at the bottom and you can just drag yourself all the way to the front um, and the live stream will stay available. <laughs> He's so loud. <laughs> Gus is never loud. Um, if it says, uh, uh, you can scroll backwards. Um, someone says, please introduce us. Okay, I'll be right back. Buddy. So this is, this is the troublemaker, Gustav. Say hi. He does not want to say hi. He just wants to be loud and dig. He, uh, he flipped over his hide is what the, uh, the loud sound was. Um, and then he was, he was trying to reposition it and I'll, I'll put him back in and, and flip it over so he can hide again. All right, thank you for joining today, everybody. Uh, I will see you next Wednesday for the Kaggle Reading Group. And, oh. <laughs> Sorry, he's, he's being prickly. Uh, I'll see you next Wednesday for the Kaggle Reading Group, and we will start a new paper. And I'll announce what that is beforehand. All right, thanks for joining, and I will see you on Kaggle. Bye.